Let me get a good look at y'all. I heard there were about 10,000 people here today. That's a lot of people. Uh, I don't think that, or I think that right-wing conspiracy that supposedly pays for us all to come here might just go bankrupt after today. Just saying. But really, is there a better, a better day to protest an out-of-control government than on the anniversary of the day the founders did over 200 years ago? Yeah. Right? I only hope that when future generations look back on today, they think of, the, they think of this as the day Americans redeclare their independence. Yeah. But in order to make such a declaration, we really need to understand what it means to be independent the same way the founders did. At the original Boston Tea Party, the colonists weren't protesting high tea costs, taxes, or even taxation without representation. The Tea Act actually reduced the cost of tea in the states. Come on, you gotta, you gotta move up sure. Can you hear me now? Well, uh, sorry. Before the Tea Act, the East India Trading Company was going bankrupt. So British Parliament, many of whom owned stake in the East India Tea Company, passed the Tea Act. This gave it special privileges and taxed its competition. Essentially, they gave that company a tea bailout. But the colonists knew exactly what it was. It was a payoff. And they weren't going to take that cheap tea, so they threw it in the harbor. Now, they weren't resisting taxes or government spending or even government intervention. Not just those things. They rejected the very idea that government's proper role in our life is as master to slaves who only live and exist by its allowance. No, the Founding Fathers said, they didn't see themselves as cattle or slaves, needing permission to live from any man or any government. But they weren't just fighting against something. They were fighting for something. They were fighting for their ideal of humanity as individuals who have a right to exist, not because anybody gave them permission, but by virtue of being human. And the founders were, real, were willing to risk their lives and their wealth defending this idea. From their years struggling on farms and towns across the newly founded America, they knew that human life required the ability to make one's own decisions for one's own life and happiness. And without those rights, you can't be truly independent. Their ideal of, human, of humanity prompted the founders to create a document that changed the world forever. The Declaration of Independence was a radical statement proclaiming that humans are created equal and endowed with the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, it is 4th of July, so you're going to hear those words a lot, but I want everybody to really think about what that means. Inalienable. That means if you take away these rights, you're taking away what it is to be a human being. And the founder said, that these rights, they were specific and carefully worded. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not the guarantee, the pursuit of happiness. They also said in that declaration that the only reason governments are institu instituted among men is to protect these rights and protect it from anybody who attempts to tread on them. Whoever it is. The founders knew these rights were required for human life, and government's only purpose is to protect them. What then if government stops protecting these rights? Do we ignore it? No. Do we live as slaves under somebody's rule? No. Or do we do something about it? Yes. When the founders looked around them, they saw what I see today. Mothers and fathers, businessmen, builders, Everybody struggling with their own individual challenges and achieving their own individual successes. They didn't see a grouping of children, weak and begging, in need of a Mother England or an Uncle Sam to tell them how to lead their lives. All they needed was freedom and they were going to take nothing less. The Founders' ideal of humanity was of brave, intelligent, and creative individuals. And as a result, they created the best country in the world. Yeah. Now when I say that, I'm not being nationalistic. America was the only country that recognized 
that the only basis for a just society is individual rights, the only country. And this shining beacon of liberty attracted the brightest minds and most industrious people from around the globe. And as a result, America became the leader in technology, medicine, and business. Now something has definitely changed in the last 200 plus years. We all know that. While in some ways, we have moved, moved closer to the principles put down in the Declaration, abolished slavery, gave women the vote, did away with Jim Crow laws, we have also moved far, very far, away from the idea that government's only role is to protect individual rights. But as Andrew, Andrew touched on, this didn't happen overnight. It happened by a slow chipping away, chipping at ideals the founders put down in the Declaration. Whenever somebody asked government to give them anything other than their liberty, that's when it happened. Because nothing is free. In order for the government to first take, I mean, in order for the government to first give you something, anything, it must take it from somebody else. First time a bureaucrat said everyone has the right to eat in a restaurant smoke free and took away the right of that restaurant owner to run his own business as he saw fit. The first time someone said it was government's purpose to support public welfare and took your right to keep your whole paycheck. When the government takes from one citizen and gives to another, or from one business to subsidize another, that's when it happened, and it was all justified in the name of public welfare. And the reason we didn't fight was because we didn't totally understand what it meant to be independent. It's not just being free from tyranny. It's the state of taking personal responsibility for your life. It's the condition of living your life for your own happiness. In the name of public welfare, government has heaped on regulation onto employers, onto businesses, even us, to protect us from ourselves. At the core of this justification is that we're not independent, but interdependent. If one fails, we all fail. Let me give you some examples of this. When the Department of Agriculture first founded, was first founded in 1839, its budget was $1,000. And it was just founded to, to collect statistics. Now its annual budget is over $96 billion. And it does everything from controlling uh, land use to setting the prices of food. Basically, we pay the government to let farmers charge us more for food. The FDA was founded in 1906 just to monitor drug health. And now it holds a pharmaceutical industry by the neck, increasing the number of years between when a, a drug is first produced and we get, we get to choose it, sometimes by decades, sometimes not at all. They take away our right to choose our own medical treatment. Lately, we've seen audacious federal projects. Uh, hundreds of thousands spent for a Colorado town to get a bike library. Hundreds of thousands to the Lobster Institute. Half a million to a town in New York to solve its homeless problem when that town says it doesn't have a homeless problem. But these protests aren't just about money. Government has ever increased its presence in our lives, squelching our ability to choose how we conduct the business of our lives. Companies can't offer us the goods we want and we can't buy the things that would improve our lives and contribute to our happiness. To quote the author and philosopher Ayn Rand, one of the methods used by statists to destroy capitalism consists in establishing controls that tie a given industry hand and foot, making it unable to solve its own problems, then declaring that freedom has failed and stronger controls are necessary. She said that in 1975, and if you want to know how we got from 1776 till today, you should pick up a copy of Atlas Shrugged. Yeah. Let me be clear, our problems aren't just economic, but the only system that defends a, the right of an individual to lead his own life, keep his property, and pursue his happiness is laissez-faire capitalism. The picture may look gloomy now, but there's a bright side. We already know that to throw off the chains of tyranny, we just need to do as the founders did and assert our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of our individual happiness. Not our neighbor's happiness, and not happiness as defi defined by them, some bureaucrat in Washington, Washington D.C., our own personal happiness. Today, we can stand up and say, we're not going to sell out our rights. We don't need government to save us from ourselves. We need it to protect us, to prevent force, outlaw fraud, protect liberty, and leave us free. Yeah. Okay, come on. We have to make that demand, here now and every day of our lives.
that government must protect our, our lives and let us live independent and free lives. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming out and standing up with me and everybody else.